Good morning, my name is Urs Fischer, I'm Secretary General of the European Stroke Organization and I'm here at the European Stroke Organization Conference in Barcelona. I have a special guest today, it's Professor Adnan Qureshi, uh, he is a professor at the University of Minnesota. Thanks for coming. So you're going to present the ATTACH2 trial today at this conference. Could you please give me a short summary of the background of the trial? Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Fisher, for having me here. Uh, so the antihypertensive treatment of acute cerebral hemorrhage 2 trial was done to address a question that has persisted for the last three decades. Um, the question about acute hypertensive response, which is elevation below or above uh, what the baseline blood pressures are in patients who actually develop intracerebral hemorrhage. And over the last decade, there has been increasing amount of data suggesting that presence of the elevated blood pressure actually leads to progressive expansion of the hematoma within the brain, and that consequently leads to neurological deterioration and death. And the question has been that if we aggressively lower systemic blood pressure, can we actually prevent hematoma expansion and which subsequently would result in a lower rate of death and disability. So that was actually the question that we set out to answer in the ATAC-2 trial. So we are very keen to get the results of the ATTACH-2 trial because we had the INTERACT-2 trial which uh, showed that lowering the blood pressure in these patients seems to be safe. Uh, but there was borderline efficacy. So we are very keen uh, to, uh, to know the results of the ATTACH-2 trial. So could you please uh, uh, tell me the results of ATTACH-2? Um, definitely. Um, so kind of give you a, a background from how we progressed from INTERACT-2 to ATTACH-2. Uh, there was a borderline effect in INTERACT-2. So the question was that if we take patients who have higher initial blood pressure and more rapidly lower their blood pressure, perhaps we can say a greater therapeutic benefit. So that's what we did in ATAC-2. And essentially, patients who had an initial systolic blood pressure of 180 millimeter or greater were randomized either to intensive blood pressure reduction, which was lowering and maintaining the systolic blood pressure to a value of less than 140 millimeter of mercury, and comparing it to standard systolic blood pressure reduction, which was lowering and maintaining it to a value of less than 180 millimeter of mercury. And the primary endpoint was actually a modified Rankine scale ascertained at three months uh, by an investigator who was blinded to the treatment allocation of these patients. And if you look at the results, um, essentially the trial was supposed to recruit 1,280 patients. Uh, after the third interim analysis that was done at when 950 patients were recruited and their three-month data was analyzed, uh, the Data Safety Monitoring Board determined that the threshold for futility had been met and further recruitment was not going to change uh, our understanding or the results of the trial. So in the end, a total of 1,000 patients were recruited, uh, 500 of them randomized to the intensive treatment group, another 500 to the standard treatment group. And if you look at the primary endpoint, which is a modified Rankine scale of four to six, so mainly uh, de severe disability or death, the rate was 38.7% in the group that was randomized to the intensive treatment group and 37.7% in the group that was random at the standard treatment group. So essentially that was a non-significant result with a relative risk of 1.04. So you basically you have a neutral trial uh, concerning um, efficacy. What about the safety? Uh, is, is it safe to lower blood pressure in these patients? So that's a very good question. And there were uh, three safety endpoints that were ascertained during the trial. One was serious adverse event that were considered related to the treatment itself within 72 hours of randomization. And if you look at the rate of such events, it's 1.6% in the intensive treatment group and 1.2% in the standard treatment group. So that is actually one, both a very small number and not a significant difference. If you look at severe hypotension in the first 72 hours, again, that rate is very small and not different between the two groups. Now, if you look at serious adverse events ascertained within the three-month period, um, it is 25.6% in the patients that were randomized to the intensive treatment group and 20% in the group that was randomized to the standard treatment group. So there is a borderline significant that perhaps serious adverse event as ascertained throughout the course of the trial seemed to be higher in the group that was randomized to the intensive treatment group. So what is this evidence of ATTACH-2 trial add now to the results of the INTERACT-2 trial? Because after INTERACT-2 trial we said, well, uh, we can lower the blood pressure 
we're not sure whether it's effective, but at least it is safe. Mm. Is this still correct or do, what uh, is your recommendation for future treatment combining the results of INTERACT2 and the ATTACH2 trial? So I think that it's important to <coughs> recognize some of the differences between the two trials. Uh, the INTERACT2 trial was recruiting patients who had an initial systolic blood pressure between 150 to 220 millimeter of mercury. In ATTACH2, the initial blood pressure had to be 180 millimeter or greater. And if you look at the systolic blood pressure profile, uh, the standard treatment group, the systolic blood pressure profile, uh, was lowered to a value that was close to 140 millimeters systolic uh, for the duration of the next 24 hours post-randomization. If you look at the intensive treatment group, that was actually lowered all the way to a value close to 110 millimeter of mercury uh, throughout the 24-hour period. So essentially, the systolic blood pressure reduction as it pertains to intensive treatment was more aggressive and more rapid in the ATAC-2 trial. So what it's saying is that perhaps very intense targets, very rapid lowering of blood pressure does not improve the functional outcome of these patients. Whether there could be some safety concerns, I think that we didn't really see any significant differences, uh, but nonetheless, the question remains open. I think it also remains open that certain patients who were not recruited in ATAC-2 trial, like those with large intracerebral hemorrhages, those with elevated intracranial pressure, may still have a risk with intensive blood pressure lowering. Uh, thank you. This is very helpful. Um, so uh, what do you think will be the future? Do we need more trials to address these questions or uh, how do clinicians have to deal with the question on blood pressure treatment in patients with intracellular hemorrhage for the future? So essentially uh, what we can say is that uh, uh, perhaps our notion that very aggressive and very rapid blood pressure lowering could actually impact favorably on the outcome of these patients is not correct. Um, but clearly our standards right now of practice are that some blood pressure lowering is uh, considered standard of care. So I think what we, uh, the future here is that we will continue in what we have been doing, which is blood pressure lowering to some magnitude, uh, but perhaps avoid intensive blood pressure lowering because it doesn't seem to provide additional benefit. So thank you very much. We would be very keen to read the publication. When will it be, be, uh, will, will it be published? So and we are anticipating a publication in the next two weeks. That's excellent. Congratulations for, your, uh, for your, all the works and efforts you did. And thank you very much for coming here to Barcelona. Oh, thank you very much for having me.